legendary Pentium 4 lineup. Once upon a time a very popular line of CPUs, which I believe everyone saw at least one PC in their lifetime running one of these, or at least their successor, the Socket 775 Pentium 4s, as those are somewhat more common and much more relevant nowadays. But what we have today isn't that, no, it's a Socket 478 Pentium 4 with just a single core and a massive TDP of 110 watts, which was a trademark of almost all of the Pentium 4s which meant that they ran very hot, and interestingly enough, the previous owner of this PC complained that the PC was shutting down after a few minutes, but as it turned out, the thermal paste was almost non-existent on the CPU, so it was a relatively easy fix. But that isn't what we are all here for today. We are here to see if you could still have some good retro gaming experience on a system like this, as many people I believe do have one laying around. The retro system that's today's victim features 2 times 512MB of DDR1 RAM, a relatively modern-ish 2006 AGP GPU and a classic 80GB IDE hard drive for the system. And as every PC needs to have an operating system, well, there is no better choice for this than the legendary Windows XP, as there really is no better or more stable way to play these older games and enjoy the best retro experience possible. The worst part about using an older system like this one is finding the latest supported version for the respectable software that you would like to use. So for example, the support for Windows XP ended in 2013. And there aren't all that many good recent browser releases, with your best bet being a Firefox version from 2017, as it really works fine and I will provide a link in the description below if you're having trouble finding one. So with that said, we should now move on to check out just how well the general user experience feels, while doing some basic tasks like web browsing or moving some data around. And for those of you who are just here for the games, there will be of course timestamps in the description below. After some painful installation procedures and after all the driver installations, we are finally set and to be honest, it really feels great going back to Windows XP, to the simpler times, as the system was extremely fast, even on such old hardware and a 15-year-old ID had to drive. Navigating the system felt pretty good, and doing some basic tasks like running some apps or just playing music was achievable without a problem. Of course, we all know that it could run Windows XP pretty well, that was even the case 15 years ago. But the real problem starts when you go web browsing, as modern pages have become very demanding. So here we have YouTube for example, which really takes a while getting ready for use, with the video playback realistically being limited to 360p, and that is without even touching the PC anymore, so it can be described as doable but pretty painful experience. Other pages do work ok, with the occasional glitches here and there, but if it's not something really graphically demanding, you won't have many problems. As we now move on to the gaming benchmarks, first up we have a 2001 classic, namely Return to Castle Wolfenstein which works absolutely fine with a mixture of medium and high settings. I would really recommend this classic to anyone who hasn't played it before, and what better way there is for the first playthrough than on a Pentium 4 coming from that time period. Next up is the 2005 action RPG with some beautiful graphics, namely Fable The Lost Chapters, running just above the 30fps threshold at 720p with medium settings. Personally a pretty enjoyable experience, but with a few stutters while entering big areas with quite a lot of vegetation or crowded cities, so maybe turning the settings down a bit could help with that.
Regarding the Elder Scrolls Oblivion, it doesn't really hit the 30 FPS threshold, but that was not really expected, as the game is a pretty demanding one, running with quite a lot of stutters while wandering through the game world, so not a really stable experience with this one, but regardless of that, the game looks pretty good even on such reduced settings. The last game in the benchmark list is the legendary Half-Life 2, running at 720p with the absolute lowest settings, but regardless of that still looking quite impressive for a 2004 game. And it runs with acceptable performance, with 32 FPS on average, with far less stutters than Oblivion did, so I could see someone enjoy it like this without a problem. So this ends the quick journey back in time, with hopefully some great memories coming up, as personally I was using a single core CPU for far too long as a kid. But there is also a not so apparent dark side to using a motherboard and CPU from the early 2000s, or basically anything from that era. So that kind of hardware now is either 20 or more years old, or approaching that mark, so it realistically could die at any moment, and it is very hot and loud and more often than not, issues like freezes or crashes or blue screens can happen, which is quite frustrating to say the least. So the issue was never that the Pentium 4 was that bad, it was just that the AMD suffering at the time was much more efficient, as this Pentium 4 even with some good new thermal paste never got below 45 degrees on idle, which tells you a lot about that, and the noise that it produces, well, let's say it isn't really pleasant. And that was just by being on the desktop, the noise levels become even more frustrating under full load. Anyways, the Pentium 4 will always be remembered as one of Intel's not so great attempts to push the CPU clocks gradually higher, hopefully providing the best possible performance, but all it brought was heat and noise, and performance not really worthy to be spoken about. But what it did was set the foundation for Intel's next disaster, namely the Pentium D series, but that's a story for another day. <laughs>